Hi everyone and welcome to the April 2000 edition of Wavelength. put this in perspective, if this pipe were to leak for roughly five to 15 minutes, it could render the drinking water supply for the city of Austin and for many other cities that rely on that Lake Travis water useless for a period of months and perhaps a period of years. In the last 30 years, this pipeline has leaked enough to have the results that I just described over 20 times. It is a pessimistic scenario and one that LCRA General Manager Joe Beal says is still avoidable. In his first press conference since taking over as General Manager, Joe Beal publicly questioned whether or not the owners of Longhorn Pipeline could safely transport gasoline and jet fuel through a pipeline that was originally designed to carry crude oil. We are not sure that this pipeline as it is presently being proposed to be built is safe enough for the drinking water supplies of Central Texas to be protected. Speaking as both the general manager of LCRA and a registered civil engineer, Beale's words carried undisputable credibility. Let me say to you that the LCRA is not against pipelines and we are not against this Longhorn pipeline if it can be made a safe pipeline. If the 50-year-old pipeline were allowed to carry gasoline and jet fuel, the LCRA is most concerned about what could happen if it ruptured as it crossed the Pertinalis River. Within just minutes, dangerous levels of MTBE, a chemical additive to gasoline, could reach the source of drinking water for three quarters of a million people. The Longhorn Pipeline runs nearly 700 miles from Houston to El Paso. Along the way, it crosses the Colorado River and its tributaries 13 separate times. The LCRA says if and when the pipeline is re-engineered and can be proven to be safe, it would not oppose it. In addition to Joe Beale's hard-hitting comments about the pipeline, Texas Land Commissioner David Dewhurst announced that his office would not approve easements which would allow the pipeline to cross state-owned land, essentially closing the door on the pipeline for the time being. The LCRA has vowed to stay on top of the pipeline issue on behalf of its water customers who live along the Colorado River watershed. And one thing is certain in the debate. LCRA's decision to oppose or support the pipeline will be based solely on scientific fact and nothing else. Smoke continued to rise from the blackened rubble a full day after the worst fire in LaGrange history. The historic Lester Hotel, built in 1883, was one of the buildings gutted by the fire. The blaze started on Wednesday afternoon, March 8th, at the China Inn restaurant on the Courthouse Square. Flames quickly spread to the upper floors. We, uh, right away, we thought, well, we got a five alarm fire here. That's when the, the chief started calling in the volunteer units. When they arrived, it was uh, fully engulfed, in, and uh, there was more. We set off and closed off the square. And about that time, we were noticing embers coming out of it. And that, right away, thought to myself, we're going to lose the whole block here. The call went out to surrounding communities for help. The call came in about 3.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday. When I got the call, I was visiting at the time at my mom's house. We were sort of listening in, standby, and then we were the fourth department called in. These LCRA employees were among the volunteer firefighters who responded to this blaze, which was the largest most had ever seen. You know, once I got on the scene, you know, it really hits you then, the magnitude of the fire and, and what this could potentially, you know, turn into. And 
Um, I got there about 3.45 in the afternoon, and I left the next morning about 8 o'clock. At the height of the fire, we had uh, five fire engines pumping water on the fire, and it, it was probably about 5,000 gallons a minute being used. Uh, we did have a report come in that there might have been an elderly lady trapped or in an apartment up on the upper floors. So myself and one other fella started going through the buildings. Uh, there was heavy smoke throughout the buildings at the whole time. Uh, we did not find any people in the building at the time, so our, our next priority, of course, was to evacuate the lower levels, uh, which we did. The heavy black smoke was so thick you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face with a flashlight. Uh, we got back as far as we could, and we could see that the fire was already way up above us. There was not any interior fire on the bottom at the time. It was uh, up above us at the time. Ten different volunteer fire departments from all over the region responded with a total of 125 firefighters. By about 8 p.m., the blaze was contained, but crews stayed on the scene through the night and into the next day. It did work real well. We have a good county organization, and we have a mutual aid agreement between everybody to work all the departments together as needed. And then it also helps that we have our response team out here People are familiar with each other. You know people, a contact person, and you know, we get the same training here, so we take it on back to our home department. And you're able to combine that together on a major scene like this to where it worked out real well. Let me tell you what, watching those flames coming out of the second story windows of the, of the theater was not a pretty sight. For LCRA board member Gail Linky, a lifelong resident of Fayette County, these now destroyed buildings bring back a flood of memories. This used to be Bonton Restaurant, and we had our wedding rehearsal dinner in there, in one of the rooms back in the back. Gail owns the Hallmark gift shop just a few doors away from the fire scene. And there was hundreds of people down here on the square watching this event uh, unfold, and we took pictures. Uh, the volunteer fire departments from all over the community showed up to uh, help out. Uh, made me really proud because I saw fire engines from Ellinger and Fayetteville and Schulenburg show up. Some of those fire trucks we had, the LCRA had helped fund and that made me feel very proud to see those men using those trucks in such an important way. Several businesses were completely destroyed, including a bookstore, barber shop, video store, movie theater, restaurant, and several upstairs apartments. Miraculously, there were no deaths or serious injuries associated with the blaze. According to LCRA meteorologist Bob Rose, the Central Texas region has been in drought conditions for almost two years, beginning right after the floods in the fall of 1998. We sat down recently with General Manager Joe Beal to talk about what will happen if we don't get significant rains this spring. Our lakes are very low. We're at about 70% uh, full. If you compare us to uh, the upstream conditions in the upper part of the Colorado Basin, up above San Angelo, then we're a whole lot better off than those folks. They're down at 5 to 10% of capacity. Uh, with Stacy Reservoir uh, being at 56%. The smaller lakes are much lower than Stacy. But um, our lakes are low, and they're going to become much more low as the summer goes on. We have just begun to make releases to our customers in the lower end of the basin, the agricultural interest. Remember that there are lots of people within this basin with different interests that all depend on the lake and river system. And this system has been designed to try to meet all of those interests, whether it be water supply for municipalities, water supply for industry, or water supply for the agricultural industry that is in the lower part of the basin. So we're going to honor the contracts that we have for industry and agricultural interest and for municipalities and continue to make water available as this drought goes on. These systems were designed to uh, catch water when it rained and to supply water for long periods of time when it didn't rain. That's the reason that the lakes are here. And consequently, you're going to see the lakes go down this summer if we do not have uh, any appreciable rainfall, which is what Bob Rose and the other meteorologists are now projecting. 
So as these lakes go down, remember that uh, it is for a purpose. Uh, it may not be very enjoyable as we uh, get the lakes to their, their lower levels. It may not be as safe as it has been in the past when the lakes are full. But there is a reason for these lakes to go down, and that is so that all of the folks within this basin can have water and can have water for the long-term future. The all-time low level for Lake Travis is 614, which occurred in August 1951. Without significant rainfall runoff, LCRA hydrologists are predicting that Lake Travis could hit 644 by the end of the year. While Lake Buchanan is predicted to hit 998, these levels would be the lowest for both lakes since 1984. On its path from the power plant to your home, electricity can travel great distances over high voltage transmission lines. These lines lead into substations where the voltage is reduced and then distributed to the end users by LCRA's 44 wholesale customers such as Pernalis Electric Co-op and the City of San Marcos. Maintenance of this critical substation equipment is very important to the reliability and cost of the electricity we all depend on every day. This infrared camera is just one of the tools used by Tensco's Diagnostic Services Group who look and listen for potential problems all while the substation equipment stays in service. The main thing we're doing or looking for is uh, to minimize maintenance costs and minimize outages. If we can uh, identify a problem, then we can take corrective action to uh, get the problem fixed or schedule it to be fixed before the ultimate, the uh, the untimely event of a power outage. The infrared camera sees a thermographic image of the transformer showing differences in temperature of the various components. We had a particular problem on this transformer a year ago. Uh, the reason I'm spending so much time looking at the LTC compartment, uh, it was 11 degrees hotter than the main tank. The transformer was taken offline and maintenance crews found loose connections inside that would certainly have caused much bigger problems in the near future. This very sensitive microphone is used to listen inside the transformer for high and low frequency sounds that could indicate problems. You'll hear sizzling sounds which uh, is, is arcing inside the transformer. And if we hear this, we'll, we'll pull oil samples and uh, uh, combustible gas samples and to see if we have uh, high gas concentrations in the transformer. Low 608. In the lower frequency range, it's a, uh, more of a, uh, a vibration. And uh, it lets you know if there's uh, loose mechanical parts vibrating inside the transformer, which could cause problems. Crews also analyze gas samples from inside the transformer, which can indicate electrical arcing. If the gas reading is abnormal, they will then draw an oil sample for more precise lab analysis. Normally we go along and we don't have anything. We don't read anything, we don't see anything, but uh, then all of a sudden, boom, we find a reading and it's a real flag. It, it indicates that we've got something going on. Recently we came across one that uh, we heard something in, and it was a little bit unusual. We went ahead and went the next step, took another hydrogen reading, and it indicated about 20,000 parts, which is very unusual in a transformer. Uh, that took us to the next step. We took the gas and oil, sent it off to the uh, laboratory. We got the results, and we're probably at that point able to save an outage for a customer at the Molten substation for GVC. So we just don't base our judgment off of just one test. When we do see a flag go up, then we start saying, okay, let's do this on it. The next progression is to do a DGA on it. Uh, and then we get those results back. And then after we get all of the uh, results in, then we make our assessment on that piece of equipment. And we determine whether we need to perform maintenance on it, if we need to pull it out of service and do emergency um, repairs to it, or it may be a normal, uh, there may be a normal characteristic of that piece of equipment. The substation survey also includes listening for unusual sounds with this handheld microphone. A sound like this can indicate a loose connection, which can lead to trouble. Finally, the substation batteries are carefully tested. Uh, the batteries are very, they're the heart 
of the substation without them nothing would operate in the in the instance of a, a power outage because we would not have station service and so we have to be sure that the batteries are in tip-top condition. Randy Woodruff with PEC says this diagnostic program helps target maintenance dollars precisely where they're needed. We've been using the diagnostic systems uh, portion of LCRA's maintenance program for about uh, two years now and it's just worked out real great. Uh, they've been real cooperative with uh, scheduling crews and, and uh, telling me up front when they find a problem instead of mailing documentation to me and then waiting for me to find out then. If anything is serious, they usually give me a phone call and we have a crew go out and take care of the problem almost immediately. For more information about the whole range of customer services available through Tensco Substation Services, call 800-776-5272, extension 6266. train off of Mansfield, do a lot of high angle, why not uh, let us get involved in this and help out and, and use hopefully some of our expertise to, uh, to work on this and make it a, a, a one co-project. The project Don Brent refers to requires you to be part mountaineer, part construction worker. Hydro crews needed work platforms to be installed on the face of Mansfield Dam so that electricians could replace the 60-year-old wiring and electrical conduit which runs under the surface. People at Waterco uh, called us, they sent us some designs down. We took the designs and uh, fabricated them. Uh, we put a few modifications onto them. We actually put some wheels onto them where we could roll them down the dam and not scratch up the platforms of the dam. And, and uh, put some movable handrails on them where the guys could get in and out of the, on and off the platform without uh, too much trouble. So uh, it's been a great project. A total of four platforms were placed on the dam all in one day. So you may ask, what are those rangers up to next? Uh, they've got some facilities down there and their irrigation canals that are going to be great for our swift water training. So as we're, we're kind of branching out uh, with some of these other lines of business, we're finding out what a great benefit uh, some of the facilities are to the rangers. So we're looking forward to uh, going to the irrigation district and, and doing the training in the near future. Meanwhile, up at Buchanan Dam, hydro crews were able to test two brand new floodgate hoists while refilling Inks Lake. Inks had been lowered for about a month so residents could do some maintenance on boat docks and retaining walls. While testing the hoist, crews also perform some maintenance, such as lubricating the gate hinges. Uh, we have planned for next month to go into and, and, and rehab the old existing hoist. They're, they're 60 years old. They have controls and, and electrical components that we no longer can buy parts for anymore. So th this really gives us an opportunity to do that also. Stone says if Lake Buchanan falls to projected levels this summer, they'll be able to test and maintain every floodgate without releasing any water. This month on Board Profile, meet Ann Jones from Brownwood, Texas. Ann Jones was appointed to the LCRA Board of Directors by Governor Bush to complete the term of John Widener as one of three at-large directors representing the LCRA Electric Service Area. Ann and husband Jimmy have now come full circle in their lives. Three years ago, they moved back to their hometown of Brownwood after very successful careers in the business world. They lived in Plano, where Ann was a real estate broker, and Jimmy owned his own business, Jones Custom Products. Notice the catwalk. Almost Jimmy says they wanted to slow things down a bit and simplify their lives. That's when they found this house Lake on Lake Brownwood. Uh, we have a lot of company. People love to come here. They enjoy uh, the lake and uh, jet skiing and just relaxing and having a good time. And we love to have company. It's uh, uh, 
an enjoyment for us and it's fun for our friends from Plano to be able to come down and spend time with us. Ann's life in Plano could be described as full. She served on the City Council, the Plano Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Realtors, she was vice president of the Texas Association of Realtors, board chair of the Columbia HCA Medical Center of Plano, and the list goes on. Jimmy was a bit concerned that she would be bored after they moved. Then came the LCRA appointment. It's been one of the best things that's happened to us. We've enjoyed the LCRA. The LCRA is basically, when I say a challenge her, it's also been a challenge to me. I've learned a lot from LCRA. Been, I was familiar with it by name only, never had basically been involved in its activities, but uh, it's been an educational process for me and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and I know Ann, she enjoys it, she lives and breathes LCRA. Uh, Brown County and Brown, the city of Brownwood has heard more about LCRA in the last six months than they have in probably, I'd say, the last five or six years. It has been like a gift to me. I, I love it. It's uh, so multifaceted. It enables me to uh, hopefully use some of the things that I learned uh, s serving on the city council and being so involved in Plano. Contract issues with our customers. Ann says she has learned a great deal about the very diverse LCR emission since becoming a board member. The one thing that I have been so impressed with is the, uh, the quality of the staff. Uh, I'm, it, just, it just seems like it every time I meet someone they're equally as qualified. Um, their, their attitude toward LCR, LCRA and the people they serve is um, so, so moving uh, because they truly want to serve and do the best job that they can. I spend a lot of time right here at this desk working on various projects and I think I need a secretary. Ann has already become very involved in Brownwood. She helped start the Star of Texas Juried Art Show, and she's president of the city's Beautification Commission. And now, she's taken up a new hobby. China painting, yes. Well, I'm not, even though I really love art and have been a supporter of the arts for years, um, I, I'm, I'm not an artist myself. And uh, so when we moved here, I heard about uh, Alma Graves. And well, it's wet. Yeah. Ann has been in Alma Graves' China painting class for about a year now. She says it's very therapeutic. <music> Ann Jones' term on the LCRA board will expire in February 2003. Stars at night. Big and bright, yeah, yeah. deep in the heart of Texas. The Star of Texas Fair and Rodeo recently completed a very successful 17-day run here in Austin. Each year, the STFR commits more than $1 million in scholarships and prize money to students from eight counties in Central Texas. Again this year, the LCRA and its employees have been very supportive of all the events. As part of the LCRA Tomorrow program, Tinsco employees hosted students from the construction academies at Travis and Lanier High Schools. My name is Mike Salas. I'm an educator at Travis High School and I had to get construction after school. The students help build walls, booths, and shelves for the youth fair. It's a great opportunity for them to get real construction experience while doing good volunteer work at the same time. Yeah, this year we have volunteers or, that have worked with the Cowboy Breakfast for about the third year. Uh, we've also had a big group that has worked with the Youth Fair. We had 1,300 kids come through the Youth Fair and we helped set that up. And volunteers work every day uh, at the country store. We also participated in the corporate barbecue cook-off, a big success this year. Elsewhere is definitely standing out, but we had a, a ton of volunteers and a lot of employees that came out and enjoyed that. And it's all for the kids. That's why we do this. Go on in and get you some sausage and a bowl of beans are free. This is LCRA's brand new barbecue ranch. Built and staffed by LCRA employees, it is lovingly referred to as Joe's Place. Good. Yeah. That's great. Bye. Uh, 
That's fantastic. Thank you. The sauces, wraps, and beans were free, but donations were being accepted for the scholarship fund. We cooked about 200 pounds of sausage yesterday and gave away have 400 pounds to do today. The reason that we do these things is to help the folks in Central Texas. We are part of Central Texas, and this is a way to give back to our customers and let folks know who we are and that we care about the little things in their lives, you know, and, and all facets of it. So uh, our employees came together and I think have done a great thing. And I think you'll see this around a lot more in the communities in the uh, time to come. Winner of hospitality, drum roll, is LCRA. The LCRA also won third place in the brisket competition and second place for fundraising. We leave you this month on a sad note. Former LCRA board member Tommy Latool died on March 27th in Charlotte, North Carolina. She was 80 years old. Tommy was the mayor of Bay City from 1989 to 1992. She also served on the Bay City School Board and City Council. Her late husband, Burton Latool, also served on the LCRA Board of Directors from 1985 to 1993. The LCRA never had better friends or stronger supporters than both Burton and Tommy Latour.